Hello, hello. Thanks for joining me for another edition of Electric Avenue's YouTube updates. Um, I do these weekly. I go through all the new releases on vinyl that we've gotten in the store this week. Uh, throw in a few CDs sometimes. Um, don't have a lot of CDs to show today. I have a lot of vinyl to show. This might be a long one. I'll try to do my best to get through this. If you hear me start coughing, I'm on day 17 of this cold. Uh, tested negative for COVID, so whatever's out there. I've been on antibiotics for like a week, so uh, feeling a lot better, but uh, it's been slow. So uh, anyway, if I start coughing, if you sound a little groggy, you'll know why. <laughs> All right, so let's get started because there's so much to show you. Uh, November 17th here, 2023, Black Friday Record Store Day. Next week uh, will be Friday, November 24th. Set your alarms, 8 a.m. I'll be showing a bunch of Black Friday stuff this coming week. So, um, And I'm sure you've seen some of it on the YouTubes already from other channels. But um, yeah, I'm not doing a whole unboxing video. It's just so much work. Uh, and... It's work enough trying to get the things together and just get their pictures up. So, all right, first thing up today. I know you've all been waiting for this. Um, this is kind of a big thing, I suppose. It's not for everybody, but it's the new Dolly Parton, rock star. Um, I do like this album cover much better than the one that's the official. This is the official indie version. That back cover is crazy. Uh, so yeah, Dolly is a, a member of Kiss or something. Very tastefully done. Um, her own Ziggy. I don't. I don't know. So this is a thirty-song, four LP set. <clears throat> it's on deep purple vinyl, uh, <laughs> featuring. Brandy Carlisle, Miley Cyrus, Rob Halford, Debbie Harry, Elton John, Paul McCartney, Stevie Nicks, Pink, Chris Stapleton, Sting, Steven Tyler. Those are the people on the sticker. I could go on here. Uh, Lizzo featuring Sasha Flute uh, on Stairway to Heaven. Uh, Simon Le Bon, uh, Michael McDonald, Pat Benatar, Emmylou Harris. Linda, Linda, uh, Linda Perry, Melissa Etheridge, Kevin Cronin. I mean, the list goes on and on. So Peter Frampton, it's mostly covers. Um, there's, I guess, a few originals, but uh, yeah. It's Dolly's rock album, So, um, and it's a 4LP set, like I said. So this thing is in the $60 range, so be prepared. I'm, that's why I say it's not for everybody. Because it ain't cheap. I mean, I know she's been put, putting this off for a long time, but... All right. Second new release to show, The National. This is their new record, Laugh Track. It's the second album they've put out this year. Uh, they have kind of similar ones, uh, looking covers. The first one was uh, something about Frankenstein, pages of Frankenstein or something like that. Uh, this is limited edition pink vinyl. Featuring Bonnie Bear, Roseanne Cash, Phoebe Bridgers, among others. Uh, this one does not have Taylor Swift. The thing that I find sort of alarming about this, I suppose, is that it's a double LP, but it's about $50. And uh, so, again, that kind of is like rooting out the people who are real fans from the ones who are like the casual fans. I don't know how I feel about that, but that is the indie exclusive uh, pink vinyl. So I don't think the regular one was much cheaper, if cheaper at all. Um, all right. Oop. Kurt Vile. It's his new EP, Back to Moon Beach. Coke bottle, clear vinyl. Um, so Kurt doesn't have a whole album, but there's six songs here. I don't know how long they are because sometimes Kurt's songs are quite long. Um, it says, uh, <clears throat> well, some of these songs here, Touch Something, Caught a Virus. Um, 
like a wounded bird trying to fly. And Tom Petty's Gone, But Tell Him I Asked For Him are the names of some of the songs on here. So you might want to check that out if you're a Kurt fan. All right, I'm going to get into a bunch of um, kind of reissue type things here. There are a lot of reissues coming out this week. Um, so first up, Pearl Jam versus. This is the 30th anniversary edition. Uh, their second album, Remastered for Vinyl. Um, it's a two LP set, mastered at 45 RPM. So each side only has three, and in some cases, the last case, uh, well, I guess every, every side has three songs. Um, this one features Elderly Woman Behind the Counter, Rear View Mirror, Dissident, Animal, Go, Daughter. Daughter was a huge hit. For me, this is probably their best album. Uh, some people really like 10, Vitology, Yield, but uh, Versus, I think, sort of where they were firing on all cylinders. Um, okay. <coughs> yeah, a little cough there. Frank Zappa, uh, Overnight Sensation. So, one of his most famous albums. And it is the 50th anniversary of this. Two LP audio file, 45 RPM, 180 gram. Features a 2023 all analog cut from the original master tape by Chris Bellman. Includes new historical essays, session photos, and a cover art poster. This also runs, uh, I think, over 50. Um, if I'm not mistaken. I checked the price on that. There's also a CD box set to go along with it. And you think, oh, CDs, it's a deal. Uh, this box set is $100. Uh, it's five CDs. It's the album, bonus vault, sensations, live in Hollywood, live in Detroit, and a Blu-ray. Um, so there's a lot there, but for the fans. All right. Um, let's see. Brian Ferry's Mamuna. Um, this is a really great Brian Ferry album from the 90s. I enjoy it immensely. It's very atmospheric. Um, Brian Eno was on it, members of Roxy Music. Uh, and it was basically kind of like started as usual, like as a Roxy album. And then Brian sort of made it a Brian album. But uh, the cool thing about this is it's two LPs, and you see the first one listed here is Horoscope, and the second one is Mamuna, and that's because it started as Sessions for Horoscope. So this includes the original Horoscope album, and then Mamuna is also packaged with it. Um, I have a an original of Mamuna that I picked up in a, at another used record store about 10 years ago for $8, and that thing now sells for a couple hundred dollars, $150. Uh, it's not in the best shape, but um, I'm so glad that they're reissuing this because I need a copy that sounds better that I can play. <clears throat> and uh, this is a different cover art. It originally had a horse on the cover, so you might remember that from it if you remember that. Um, also, the last song on Horoscope is Mother of Pearl, and it's nine minutes long. And if you are familiar with Roxy Music, you know that Mother of Pearl, the original, I believe it appears on Stranded, um, their third album. So anyway, excited about that, obviously. Uh, let's see. Next up, uh, Bob Dylan, another Budokan. Um, this was a con concert that he did in Japan, uh, 1978. This is the 2LP edition. Runs about $45. Uh, 2LP, Gatefold. It's a nice collection of stuff from those concerts. Uh, does feature All Along the Watchtower, Hard Rain's Gonna Fall, Girl from the North Country. Um, the thing about this is, is that there is a vinyl box set, but it's I think it's eight records, and it's only available from Japan, and it sells for like, I don't know, something crazy, like $300 or something like that. So 
Um, so you maybe four hundred dollars. So you might not be interested in a box set of that. Uh, one thing though that you might be, if you're a little more like inclined to, there's a CD edition in a box set. These look like they were actually made in Japan. They probably sound amazing. Um, it does say Sony Music. Oh, it says Made in Japan. All of the titles on the back are in Japanese and then subtitled English. This is a four CD set. Very nice presentation. Sells for about $150. Uh, so this is a lot for four CDs, but look at the presentation. The Japanese do it right. So... Um, if you're interested, maybe this is the option for you, if you like CDs. Um, I do. Okay. <coughs> Another little cough. Moving right along. Sinead O'Connor. Uh, this is her first album, The Lion and the Cobra. Probably my favorite record of hers, and what I would probably call her best overall. Um... This is the original European cover, and for America, they made her change it because they said, oh, she looks like a crazy wild woman, and we prefer this picture of her looking downcast and sort of um, more reverent. <laughs> so this is the original cover, and um, the back is sort of nondescript as it was. Um, these This features... Her biggest uh, early songs, Mandinka and I Want Your Hands On Me, were the singles. Uh, if you've ever never heard Troy, you must hear that song. It is incredible what she does with her voice on that song. And I, and the orchestra, I think it's probably my favorite song of hers. It's just such an explosion of emotion. And it's about her mother, which she said later on, which uh, makes it even more chilling because it is not a warm and friendly song. Uh, and then also Jerusalem is on here, uh, Jackie, and um, the song Never Get Old, which I mentioned in a f uh, former video and didn't really say, but that actually features a spoken word from Enya, the one, the artist who would become Orinoco Flow, Sail Away, Enya is on that, uh, but just speaking. So anyway, she was they were sort of friends at the time. I know that's kind of weird because you think, wow, their music was so different, but... They ran in similar circles. Um, and then her second... Actually, this is her third album. Her second album was uh, I Do Not Want What I Haven't Got. That's the one that features... Um, yeah, n Nothing Compares to You. And um, that has been around, and we have that in stock already. So uh, the third one was very hard to get. This is her kind of comeback record after that. She didn't really know exactly, I think, what to do. And so this was kind of a stopgap for the record company. She did an album of American standards, basically, uh, with Phil Ramone producing. He was uh, Billy Joel's producer and has since passed away. But uh, this features uh, Success Has Made a Failure of Our Home was probably the, the, what was the single from this, a great song. And I think, um, let's see, the others were all covers, Black Coffee, Secret Love, Bewitched, Bothered, Bewildered, Don't Cry For Me, Argentina, Gloomy Sunday. Um, it's probably not one of her best albums, but it's interesting. Um, she takes a very kind of tender tone with her voice on it. The album that I think people should take note of is Universal Mother. This is the album that came after that. And she'd already kind of been through all of the controversy of the ripping of the Pope's picture and the concert and... Uh, where she was booed off stage. This is a great album. This is uh, basically the fourth album, R.I.P. Um, some amazing vocals on this album uh, featuring, um, well, <clears throat> Fire on Babylon was the single, and that was just another incredible song that should have been much bigger. And then um, a couple other songs. Uh, I think this has... Um, uh, it's red football, I think. I mean, she gets very, like, kind of political on this album, but most of it is kind of like a quiet anger, a qu quietly seething anger. And then there are some songs where she just explodes. And uh, it's great, 
great stuff. Anyway, it's a terrible <laughs> loss. Um, I think I've mentioned that before, but I think it's going to be one of those, she's one of those people that down the road, people are going to be like, oh my gosh, what a loss for that generation, you know? Um, all right, speaking of music of the 80s, I love this band, Madness. This is their new album. Theater of the Absurd presents C'est La Vie. Uh, Madness, great sort of uh, late, late, well, I would say early 80s was when they really hit, but sorry, late 70s or into the early 80s. Ska band that's sort of reductive um, from England. Fantastic band. Uh, some really great tunesmiths here. Um, Love Suggs and his uh, song creations. And uh, this is uh, 14 of your five a day on double filthy black vinyl gatefold. Uh, if you want that, you can get that, or you can get the color vinyl, which is a limited edition crystal clear gatefold. I don't know if I guess clear is a color, um, but anyway, so yeah, it's kind of set up in uh, four acts, <clears throat> well, three acts and an epilogue, so, uh, and, a, and a prologue, so really it's, it is five acts, but um, catchy stuff and always sort of observational <clears throat> people in like British life and stuff. Um, back to some new stuff. New Kenny Wayne Shepherd album, Dirt on My Diamonds. Uh, he was a young blues guy, now a middle aged blues guy, but uh, getting dirty and gritty on his latest rock and blues road trip. This is on natural transparent vinyl. This says volume one. So I assume that there's probably more to come. Uh, anyway, some Kenny Wayne fans out there have been waiting for that. Uh, Polyphonic Spree. This is their new record, Salvage Enterprise. It's been a long time, long time since we heard from them. Um, I don't know if they're ever going to have the big blast of success that they did when they were all out there in their multicolored choir robes like nearly 20 years ago, but uh, still interesting stuff. Andrew Bird, his latest album, Outside Problems, a collection of improvised instrumental performances recorded outside. Well, if you know Andrew, you know he's an incredible violinist and, and uh, whistler, good guitarist too. Uh, so that's probably really interesting if you just want something chill for your Thanksgiving. Speaking of Thanksgiving, this cover reminds me of Thanksgiving a lot. Benjamin Gibbard of Death Cab for Cutie and Andrew Kenny's Home EP. Uh, this is a 2003, so it's 20 years old, acoustic split release from Ben Gibbard and Andrew Kenny on Canary Yellow Vinyl. So if you want to go back a little bit in time and pick that one up. All right. Uh, let's see. Share. Get into the holiday spirit. Share Christmas. And uh, looking fine. She and Dolly. Women in their 70s rocking it out. Uh, her first ever Christmas album on Ruby Red Vinyl. Party with her friends Stevie Wonder, Darlene Love, Michael Buble, Tyga, and Cindy Lauper. So there you go. Uh, produced and mixed by Mark Taylor. I think he did believe maybe had something to do with that. So probably like a modern dance party, right? Um, Trolls, the new Trolls soundtrack band together. This features NSYNC's Better Place if you are interested in that. Um, let's see who else is on this. Oh, it's got people like Andrew Rannells who did voices in the movie. It's mostly NSYNC and Justin Timberlake kind of stuff on here. So, is that where Justin's career is at now? Jersey Boys. People love this. Uh, this is out on vinyl. Uh, this is the first time I've seen it on vinyl. So, if you, uh, if you love the soundtrack, here's your chance. I may have to order more of those. <laughs> Um, Blue Note. All right, so we got some Blue Note reissues this week. Tina Brooks, True Blue. This is in the Blue Note Classic series uh, from the original analog tapes. Mastered by, you guessed it, Kevin Gray. Uh, 
All right, that's one. And they always come in twos. So the second one, Wayne Shorter, Night Dreamer. Uh, this features Lee Morgan, Reginald Workman, Elvin Jones, etc. cetera. Uh, this is uh, supposedly uh, McCoy Tyner's on this too. Uh, great, great, great stuff. Uh, the Tina Brooks features Freddie Hubbard, Duke Jordan, Sam Jones, and Art Taylor, just so you know. And uh, on the Verve Acoustic Sounds, we get Oscar Peterson Trio with Milt Jackson, very tall. And this features uh, Green Dolphin Street, Heartstrings, The Work Song, John Brown's Body, Wonderful Guy, and Reunion Blues. Um, Master to Quality. Um, yeah. Acoustic Sounds always does amazing stuff. I just got um, Nina Simone's Pastel Blues, uh, the Acoustic Sounds one. I'd been looking for that for a while. I, we had it in the store, and I just passed it up. Played that the other night. Oh, my gosh. Probably one of the best-sounding records I own as far as, like, the quality of the mastering and the manufacturing. So Acoustic Sounds know what they're doing. Uh, Kraft, also another company that knows what they're doing. This is Hot House. The Complete Jazz at Massey Hall Recordings. This will run you about $100. Um, it's in this nice kind of shiny overlay. Featuring Charlie Parker, Dizzy Gillespie, Bud Powell, Charles Mingus, and Max Roach. Uh, so many people already have jazz at Massey Hall, but this is the, the whole thing. Um, this is a three record set. Yeah. And like I said, it runs about $100, so... Start saving your pennies for Christmas. Oh, I remember Black Friday's next week. Um, Jazz Contrast by Kenny Dorham. This is a, a classic Kenny album. And this was mastered directly from the original mono analog tapes by Kevin Gray. Um, printed and pressed at Palace. Um, officially licensed from Concord. This is on this New Land Records, which is uh, a new sort of... or another audiophile type uh, remastering remastering company. Uh, and the other one that they put out this week, Nice and Tasty by the John Wright Trio. And this I'm less familiar with, but it has uh, original stereo analog tapes by Kevin Gray um, at Presto Palace. So, yeah. Da -da -da -da. Interesting. All right. Um, okay, back to back to Popville. More reissues. Shania Twain, greatest hits. Uh, it's kind of hard to find around here some Shania on vinyl, I think. And this probably has most everything that you would really want of her first major run. For always and for good, for good, forever and for always. I'm gonna get you good. Oh. Uh, Come on over, man. I feel like a woman that doesn't imp that don't impress me much from this moment on. You're still the one. I think you get the idea. There, this was out on CD and um, now it's out on vinyl. Um, Evanescence, twentieth anniversary of this album, Fallen, was a huge album. This is the uh, indie version, uh, pink marble vinyl. Adds a bunch of extra tracks on the second record. Uh, Bring Me to Life demo, uh, an AOL session, Going Under Live Acoustic, My Immortal Live, band version, strings version, a few B-sides. If you like Evanescence, you might want to pick that up. Uh, that's kind of cool. I can't believe it's been 20 years. Some of these, I'm like, has that much time passed? Ween, the pod. Well, a lot of Ween fans will probably want to get this. This is uh, back on vinyl, 2LP, Fuscus edition, um, includes download. This is one of their really, well, so all their albums are a little strange, but this is one of the really strange ones, uh, featuring Demon Sweat, Can You Taste the Waste, <laughs> Mononucleosis, uh, She Fs Me, <laughs> I don't know, Crazy. Strap on that Jimmy pack, a jammy pack. Uh, anyway, you get the idea. Ween. Uh, this is actually really cool color vinyl. 
Um, if you look at the pictures online, you'll see that. The Colts, Electric, this was a big, big hit for them, breakthrough in the U.S. Um, I think their 1997 third album includes Wildflower, Little Devil, and Love Removal Machine pressed on blue vinyl. They were sort of like, at this point, they became like England's answer to ACDC, although I don't know. I don't know if that's really quite right, but they were great. They were kind of, they rode sort of the cross between alternative music, alternative rock, and uh, and just all-out rock. So this was a, a turning point for them, I feel. Um, their first album, if you listen to their first album, Love, it's almost like, it's great, but it's like, oh, that's a different band, you know? Um, the Rapture, Echoes, this is a great indie rock version or album too. I haven't seen this in a long time. Uh, LCD sound system took off and the Rapture just kind of faded. It seems like they were pretty good. Um, I think they were on DFA for a while. Uh, LCD's label This features House of Jealous Lovers, which was their big sort of indie hit. Um, Maybe their next album. I like the one that came after it, but it was a little more produced sounding. Maybe that was the problem. I'm not sure. Don't know what happened there. <coughs> are they still around? Maybe they are. Rancid. Uh, their new album, Indes or not new album, new release, Indestructible. This is a reissue of uh, one of Rancid's uh, sort of like mid-period albums. And it's on uh, red color vinyl, I think. This is limited edition color vinyl. But this is a first first edition of this on vinyl, uh, on this color. Um, it looks like there's a bonus track on there. There's quite a few songs. Rancid sort of were huge out of the gate. Um, well, not out of the gate. It took a little while. But they had their huge moment, and then they kind of have you know wandered a little more since then. Back together. Um, Daft Punk, Random Access Memories drumless edition um i say to myself why would somebody want to hear this but i guess if you're into like sampling and stuff like that or you just want to hear what's going on without all the drums uh it's interesting very white <laughs> okay so that's new tribe called quest the Love Movement, this has been out before, but it's been a while since it's been, been in print. It's out of print. This certified gold album features Find A Way, Hot Sex, and Scenario remix. Scenario was a pretty big hit for them. Um, but this is sort of like, I want to say, kind of getting towards the end of their first um, reign of the, the Imperial period. Um, wouldn't be a week without a King Gizzard release. Nonagon Infinity. This is the Alien Warp Drive edition. Uh, it's just on a crazy cool color vinyl. Um, but that's been out before. I don't know if there's any extra tracks or anything like that. It's in this bag that's sort of falling apart. Um, hmm. Don't know. Anyway, usually these bags are put together really well, but this one, for some reason, the glue's kind of going. I don't really want to mess with that too much. I'll leave that up to whoever buys it. Um, Death Heaven, Sunbather. It's another great sort of indie rock album from about 10 years ago. Pretty kind of on the metal. It's like, there's a lot of screaming going on. Uh, but this is a 10th anniversary remix remaster, so... They must have thought that there were some reasons that that needed to be remixed. I, mean, I guess it sounded a little thin at times from what I remember, but uh, this is the Indie Exclusive Orange, Yellow, and Pink Haze vinyl. All right. I told you guys there's a lot this week. Uh, Grantley Buffalo. Uh, here's his their album, Jubilee, uh, featuring Grantley Phillips. 2023 remaster pressed on 182 180 gram clear vinyl uh and also their album copperopolis copperopolis uh which is they're from about the same sort of eras um some great photos there uh i think they've already released a couple of their albums earlier this year these were produced by paul fox 
and Paul Kimball. Um, I know Paul Fox did some stuff with XTC. I've seen Paul Kimball's name around too, so. Uh, Grant Lee is a great singer-songwriter, so that's probably, I don't know if I remember hearing those. I think I heard them when they came out, and I thought they were great, but yeah, at the time you're like, oh, I can't buy everything, so. Uh, the Kinks. Uh, the Journey, part two. And so earlier this year, there was uh, part one, which was sort of like an early Kinks greatest hits. And this is part two. This picks up with, um, well, it starts with Till the End of the Day, which is 1965, but then it jumps to Preservation, 1974. So um, it's kind of like all over the place. I mean, Lola, Sunny Afternoon is on here. Um, it's kind of more like an examination of their career than some sort of chronological uh, chronological sort of thing. Uh, Clark Kent. This is uh, Stuart Copeland from The Police, his side project from the 80s. Um, remastered on two LPs. So uh, I think there's extra stuff on there. Clark Kent fans would know. But um, yeah, it's cool to see things like this getting sort of attention. Um, speaking of the police, Joe Sumner, Sunshine in the Night. Joe is uh, Sting's son. And here's his new solo record. Um, haven't heard it yet. I have heard, I've heard him. He sounds pretty great. If you like Sting, I mean, he's not that far off. Ice T's Power. A reissue of this. Um, this is uh, on limited ice cold gold colored vinyl. Uh, last week there was a Ice T Greatest Hits thing that came out. So I don't know if I can show that on camera. <laughs> She's pretty. Uh, I think that was his wife actually. Fred Schneider and the Superions Destination Christmas. Well, Fred is um, the guy who talks in the B-52s. <laughs> And this is his new Christmas album. Santa's Disco, Fruitcake, Chillin' at Christmas, Teddy and Betty Yeti, Christmas Conga, Crummy Christmas Tree, Santa Je Um Well, that ought to get the Christmas, Christmas party started. And then when you want to come down, there's a reissue of Amy Mann's Christmas album. One More Drifter in the Snow, featuring some of the saddest Christmas songs you'll ever hear. I think the, <laughs> the cover art sort of says it all. Um, I do like this, so Whatever Happened to Christmas is on here. Um, some traditional stuff, and she does a great You're a Mean One, Mr. Grinch, with uh, her pal Buddy Judge, I believe, does the other vocals. Uh, replacement Songs for Slim. This was a later Replacements thing, sort of an EP. Uh, it was a fund for Slim Dunlap. Um, that's what the money went to. Uh, so that's on New West. This is a limited color vinyl edition. Pylon. A couple of Pylon reissues back in stock. Gyrate and Chomp, one of the greatest album covers ever. <laughs> um, I love how the top of it is serrated. Like It looks like the dinosaur took a chomp out of it. Old T-Rex there, but... If you like sort of like uh, post-punky kind of like alt-rock from the 80s. Um, yeah, they were great. Um, they're, they're a band that I didn't really listen to at the time, and I've sort of checked them out since, and I really like what I hear. Uh, space Funk, Volume 2. Afrofuturist Electrofunk in Space, 1976 to 84. Well, the cover alone looks super cool, doesn't it? Um, yeah, you get two records of, I think, what it says, Space Funk. Uh, here's a reissue that we got uh, black. It came out on Record Store Day and has been reissued again. Fred Davis, Cleveland Blues. So if you didn't get this one and you were looking for it, um, this is by that Coal Mine Records, uh, which they do great sort of old soul based out of Ohio. Uh, so that's back in print. Um, Iron and Wine, Who Can See Forever. This is like a, a new soundtrack, I believe, that they've taken part in. And um, 
This is their first official, oh, I'm sorry. This is their first official live record captured in 2018 in North Carolina. 19 song journey covering their career. Well, Iron and Wine Live. This is also the loser edition, so it's a special uh, colored vinyl on first pressing. They, Sub Pop have finally softened a little bit and let indie stores have a crack at some of those things. Matt Berry, the actor um, <coughs> and musician, this is his new record, Music Recorded Library, KPM. Um, he's sort of acid jazz kind of stuff, um, so if you like kind of jazz funk or whatever. Um, and he tells you exactly on the back here what all of these songs use as far as like rumbling bass, rhythm guitar, uh, xylophone, mellotron, etc. So it's just basically him and a drummer, and then there's some strings added, and I think it's instrumental. So if you like your acid jazz. Uh, Oingo Boingo, this is their early EP, the first EP um, with the psychedelic cat on the cover. A reissue by Rubell and Remasters, 1980 debut EP, uh, includes the original version of Only a Lad and now includes both versions of Ain't This the Life, limited to 500 on gray and black vinyl. These will probably be gone fairly quickly. Um, an album that I love, and I don't know how many other people do, but Scritty Politty, White Bread, Black Beer. This was Scritty's album from 2006. It came out on Rough Trade. And um, Green Gartside had kind of broken off. I think I mentioned this in one of the videos from uh, from uh, David Gamson, who did a lot of the music that was the slicker side of Scritty. And kind of he ended up working, doing songs for like Kelly Clarkson and so the big hits like that. Um, but this is a lot more organic kind of sounding because it's pretty much just green. Uh, and he does um, the Boom Boom Bap was the single, but Snow and Sun is a great song. And that was actually covered by uh, Tracy Thorne on, of Everything But The Girl on her Christmas album. So um, anyway, he's got a very sweet kind of feminine type voice, but the music is a little... It's very sort of like stripped down alternative kind of stuff. Um, and then uh, Vertigo, the soundtrack by Bernard Herrmann from Alfred Hitchcock. This is limited edition color vinyl, uh, audiophile, 180 gram bonus tracks. Um, I believe it's direct metal mastering too. Yep. So anyway, this is going to sound great. I mean, it's one of Herrmann's best, uh, best scores soundtracks and uh oh i should mention this here uh the new box set from winger uh chapter one atlantic years 1988 to 93 so it features the first four winger albums i'm sorry three and then a demo anthology so you got uh winger in the heart of the young and pull uh the first one of course features 17 and hungry uh and uh yeah it was a huge hit so that's out um if you want one let me know because i probably won't have them just hanging around the store and for your last moment of recommends for the week because i feel like i have to do that <coughs> excuse me while i warm up here i thought about like including this a couple weeks ago and then i thought you know, I need to listen to this a little bit more and really just delve into it. And I'd always love this album, but it's a sort of a, uh, a, an, a deep listen. So I'm going to recommend Talk Talk Spirit of Eden. I know that uh, this is recommended by multitudes of critics and whatever, but just from a sort of lay person's um, love for the album. You know, Talk Talk were a band that they were sort of pop and then they really weren't they kind of threw it uh, to the side as their career went on and this was really um the album before is probably my absolute favorite which was color of spring and that's kind of like the album that sits in the middle where they kind of were almost like mining the same kind of territory that peter gabriel were with some world music and uh some more atmospheric stuff, but then still doing kind of like the more uh, catchy stuff. 
And this album has really nothing catchy about it. It um, is very like um, more about mood, ambience, um, sort of like the, the sort of tone that is coming from Mark Hollis as the artist uh, and, and uh, Tim Freeze Green and other people in the band. But it's only six tracks. They're all quite long. And um, this is not an album to put on for a party starter or an album uh, to soundtrack a football game or a night out. This is very like, I wouldn't even necessarily drive too much with, I mean, you can drive with this on, but all of the distractions of the world kind of take it down. You almost need to just put it on late night when you're home alone or something. And uh, it's a good headphones album but you really need to listen to it all the way through. It's not one that can be like, it's not very skippable. In other words, um, begins with the track, the rainbow, which is, um, dark and brooding. And I think it sort of establishes the tone with the kind of creeping strings that go on. And, um, Eden kind of, I mean, all the songs sort of run together. Eden kind of picks up where that leaves off. And there's sort of this like, slight rhythmic pulse that goes through it and uh, then um, it's sort of haunting all the tracks are haunting and then the third track desire is where uh, there's a few more explosions of sound and you kind of get the prog rock feeling of that and then uh when you turn it over inheritance i mean you will turn this over inheritance is sort of um kind of more like just dark <laughs> um I don't know how to describe it. There's dark, but there's such a lightness to it. You really do feel like he's sort of, Mark is talking a lot about uh, nature and stuff like that. And um, it's a shame we lost Mark Hollis a few years ago. And um, it's been almost 10 years now. Um, he was a real artist who kind of got so involved in the art that he kind of had to get rid of being a recording musician sort of for the masses because his uh his inner spirit did not uh, coincide with what co commercial demands were out there um i believe in you is sort of a almost like an answer song to the previous album had a song called i don't believe in you it's a little more optimistic and has a little uh lighter sort of feel to it and it also um has these kind of mantras that he sings uh, over and over. And uh, Wealth is the last track, and it sort of kind of almost just fades into the ether. And you think, well, I've got an album here with six songs. Why would I want that? Well, when every song is like two to three times the length of a regular song, it kind of makes up for it. And like I said, they all run together. So it's sort of um, a complete listening experience. Um, and I kind of think, you know, I don't know if it's their masterpiece, but I would say probably because it's the one that they really went out on a limb and did something. It's very jazz textured in a way, but almost not, not that because it's not as improvisatory as jazz, although it is, it does have elements of that. It's just not like, if you think of jazz as being kind of not structured, this breaks it apart even a little bit more. Um, Mark's vocals are sometimes indecipherable. Uh, there's a, I think this one has um, the lyric sheet in it and the lyrics are pretty much illegible because they're written in his handwriting. So that might be something where you actually have to Google the song lyrics and read along if you're interested to that level. But um Talk Talk, Spirit of Eden, uh, a Stone Cold classic, masterpiece, um, 19, uh, this is 1988, 89, somewhere in the 88, 89, 90 era, I think. Uh, but anyway, I think it's 88. I should have researched that. Anyway, uh, fantastic record. The world was not ready for it when it came out, honestly. I think if you were into like, David Sylvian, a little bit of like um, that sort of uh, jazzy kind of British stuff. You might have been into this, but this was even a little bit further out of the box than that. So uh, I just love it. And I go back to it from time to time and think, how did they do this? And um, 
they did it pretty much again on the following album, Laughing Stock, which is sort of like this in a, in a lot of ways. Um, maybe even slightly bleaker. Uh, I don't know. And then Mark's solo album, he did one solo record that also has elements of this kind of sound, but it's even a little different. So, and that was late 90s. And then you know, was, we never heard from him again. Uh, so there you have it. Uh, thanks for joining me. 45 minutes. You deserve a medal. I deserve a medal. Look, I got through it pretty well, actually. So thanks. And I uh, hope I'm on the mend. And uh, everyone have a wonderful weekend and uh, have some birthdays out there. Uh, one of my favorite people, RT, it's happy, happy birthday to you. And um, yeah, and uh, my buddy Brett, uh, see you guys here next week. And uh, I guess I'm going to have to figure out how to get this video done uh, before Thanksgiving because we'll have the videos may come earlier next week. Uh, I think that's going to have to happen because of Black Friday. And I'm going to want to show you a lot of that stuff. So you might want to be looking. You might, well, if you're subscribed, you'll get the notification. But I'm sure that by like probably Tuesday night, late Tuesday or something, something will pop up. So I can't say for sure, but I'm so disorganized. <laughs> Thanks all. Have a great weekend. Peace as usual.